Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ για την πρόσκληση και τον κυδέντερο κυβέρνηση. So thank you for the invitation. I would like to thank Mr. Balakakis for this invitation to attend this forum and talk about the way in which we could have a synergy between research, academia, authorities, stakeholders with a view to ensuring the quality, safety and authenticity not only of seafood but also of every type of food. Seafood is a case study for the purposes of this presentation. Our goal is to is for all stakeholders in the supply chain to derive some benefit. Well, this is a presentation that discusses how we could make the most of digital tools of our times in order to ensure very quick quality control. And our goal is to create a digital tool that where we will be able to upload information. The tool will process the information that is relevant to quality, safety and authenticity, authenticity of the food and then both the industry and the authorities or even the end consumer will have access to this information. And all that with a view to ensuring their reliability and transparency to, of all the processes related to this particular food. Now, what have we been doing? Despite the fact that we have management systems, the traditional quality control, I'm afraid, is to a large extent uh, not, implement, not run in a particular particularly digital way. And so we start from a first part in this aspect in the manufacturing process and then this information is used in order for us to make a decision as to how we're going to manage the, process, the product. Like I said, seafood is a case study here. Okay, freshness is one of the key features that we examine, and all those analyses always relate to the microbiological activity, because this is what freshness is directly linked to. We might have, of course, sensory evaluation where we assess the smell, the touch, the appearance. We might opt for a direct identification of microorganisms through molecular techniques or microbiological techniques, or we might opt for chemical approaches. And lately, we also apply mathematical modeling approaches in order for us to predict the development of germs. All those techniques, however, have some limi limitations. Sensory analysis is quick, but is difficult to be implemented for routine testings because it requires experienced panelists. Conventional microbiology delays because it might take three days for the result to be delivered. Molecular tools also require lots of hours to develop. When it comes to chemical markets in terms of seafood, well, sometimes it's not feasible to implement that because we don't have specific substances that are reliable in order to obtain an assessment of their freshness and microbial modeling can provide quick answers but they have their setback because you need to know what's the initial population and this is something that takes time. In general, the food industry, the food authorities and consumers need results in um, minutes or even in seconds if this is possible. So. In order for us to be able to remove all these obstacles and limitations, so we follow the traditional quality control that has been replaced to the PAT, the Process Analytical Technology. It is another approach with which we try either in line the production process or at any other point of um, the supply chain, we try to run quick measurements using specific sensors and this information will go to a repository in order to be analyzed and matched to the previous parameters I mentioned before. 
So this is quickly accessible to those who need to make a decision as to how they should manage this badge in terms of the freshness of the product. So how can this be achieved? Those are some sensors. Well, those sensors um, are instruments. Instruments that are based on spectroscopy. We might have an FTIR, we might have image resolution, we might have an electronic nose. All of those devices and instruments are very small. They are portable, meaning that you can scan, obtain the fingerprint of the food at any time, at any point of the supply chain. How did we work with that? Well, okay, you take your product, this is a sea bass filet, you package it and then you try to simulate the transportation conditions. And uh, you scan at regular intervals. Here in this case we used the spectrum offered by FTIR and image analysis. At the same time, you run microbiological analysis because this is what we want to run right now to ensure that this is fresh. So, those are the spectrums that you obtain from this analysis. And on the basis of this fingerprint I mentioned before, the microbiological testing results that you have already run, you create a regression model that can offer, the, that can match the fingerprint to a microbiological results. So what's the benefit? Over a few seconds, you can obtain the result you're interested in. In the past, this would have taken two or three days. So, is this correlation satisfactory? Well, in our case, the re actual tangible results were very satisfactory. There was a very good correlation between the image analysis and exceptional correlation with the FTIR. So you can see that the real bacterial count were directly correlated to those that we obtained through the regression model. And you realize that this is a job that our laboratory had started in collaboration with the Agricultural University of Athens. But the question is that right now we also have other tools available. We have the omics, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, meaning that we can collect many data that are relevant to safety, authenticity, etc. So we have the quick scans, the quick fingerprints, and uh, all those things are the big data. This is how we call it today. And in this case, we also have colleagues from other disciplines stepping in, IT colleagues, who can obtain all those data and process them thanks to techniques that they have available, machine learning, etc. They can help us build all those models, models that can help us match this data to some other data. And this brings us to the conclusion that we can have information that is in line with the fingerprint and uh, this might be stored in the cloud, computed cloud as we call it. And those data can be analyzed on the cloud in order to give the information that the industry is interested in. And the computed cloud, you can also upload other aspects of the project, for example, the geographical characterization, uh, the growing process, carbon footprint. So this entire information is available there. It can be used by the industry and uh, any other interesting party can do that. We might have access to that through a mobile phone and we can obtain information uh, for this product for everything that is relevant or of interest to the consumer, safety, authenticity, etc. And in that way we are able to further boost the reliability of the chain. So, in order to do that, all we need is for every product to have specific sensors tested. They need to be correlated with the parameter of interest. So, food scientists that will undertake to carry out those studies will generate this big data 
Dear colleagues from the IT science um, and the da data science, will be able to build the repositories or the clouds that we mentioned before. And from that point on, this information can be shared and can be used by all stakeholders. Thank you very much. Mr. Balakakis, I was very brief.